Caddis Maximus here again. I have this old uh, Craftsman water meter that measures in the hundreds of gallons, so it's really, it's scaling is for a lot more water than I wanted to measure, but it was just a garage sale find, so I figured I'd do a quick review and then tear down so we can see how this works. This will be a basic review because it's kind of a basic device, but it has a little bit of complexity inside. Uh, it's pretty well built, pretty heavy duty. The part number is 69392. Uh, I don't know how long it's been since they've sold these, but I've seen a few of them for sale online. It really is a pretty sturdy, large housing, and it's a water meter that measures in the hundreds of gallons. Each tick mark on this dial is 100 gallons. So such as over here at 4 or 8, that's 400 or 800 gallons. So it's really if you're filling swimming pools or doing small time farm with uh, irrigation or anything along those lines. That's kind of what this water meter is for. But now there's this little digital turbine one, so you don't really need these large, uh, this, this thing is huge, but it is reasonably accurate. And it is reasonably high flow. This is just set up to run off a garden hose. You take one end of the garden of a garden hose and you just screw it into this side. And it has an adapter so it can accept larger uh, hoses. And then on the other side, it's still the same uh, standard garden hose connector. And you just put the other end of the hose on and then pump whatever you need it through. And it just has kind of a vein mechanism inside. So I was just thought we would uh, uh, talk about it, review it. This thing is definitely pretty reliable. Uh, the one caveat is they don't include a filter, so you'd want one of those little screen filter cones for the input. Otherwise, these types of pumps do jam up. But they're tremendously reliable, and so whenever you see these style or the new digital ones, uh, they're really the way to go whenever, for the, you know, not very many situations you need a water meter, but if you're filling up kiddie pools or any of that kind of stuff, um, you can see how much water you're using. Not like you can't use the meter that already comes with, say, your house, but maybe if you're pumping water out of something, this would let you know how much you uh, have actually removed. I always thought the mechanisms were kind of neat. So let's go ahead and uh, knock this thing apart. I think this is too tough for my hand. Just a second here. Here we are, and this is a perfect example of why you would want at least a large pair of slip joint pliers or channel locks, something, because... This knot maybe doesn't look that big, but it's actually two inches across those flats. For me, a socket has to be easy enough. And so one of these gets loose or uh, you need to replace the seal. I believe there's a seal between this metal flange. We'll see. Uh, it's kind of one of the reasons I collect big tools is just to, for these situations where you actually like this, can have a socket and turn out it's just hand, so hand tight. And we can pull this off. It's a little bit greasy in there, we can see. Interesting, but there is a or ring seal and a little die cast zinc in inlet piece. And that's the first part. We actually can see this little inlet cap has a couple of small screws. Let's go ahead and grab, pull those out. This thing here may be some kind of baffle or maybe a, uh, perhaps or even a restrictor. We'll unscrew it here and see what pops out or see if it pops out. It looks like there's a couple of channels. Here we go. And then there is, and this pops out. Let's get that screw out of there. There's an interesting system in here. These things are always kind of odd, but there's this metal rod. We can see it went into this right here, which seems to act as a spring. Ooh, it's a little bit greasy. Let me get a napkin. Nothing else comes out, but there is a metal pin in there. And we can actually see it looks like a pin. The one end, the end that was sticking in the housing is a little bit... Oh, both ends are actually. So it's some little pin with a couple of widened ends. I see, and it goes through here, and it's some kind of uh, spring-loaded mechanism. Kind of interesting. It looks like a bronze or a brass pin, of course, for corrosion resistance. Now let's open up the main case and see what's inside. It looks like this may be a reasonably short video. That's what the intention was.
here we are we're almost done there's actually eight screws on the top of this so it's well screwed in large screws and there we are you actually got to experience real time me pulling out all those screws it actually didn't take very long with a little power screwdriver like that and I always kind of like those little tools not as big and heavy as an impact let's see if I can't get this apart it's actually pretty tight on there there may be a sec something related to the knob which is held in by an e-clip and it's actually pretty tight in there I don't know how exactly I've gotten it loose we'll try using a pick to pull it out of there it's kind of difficult to do let's see if we can't use the tip of the screwdriver let me pause it here we go we got that little e-clip out it was actually pretty darn well on there now we've got to get this knob off and the other end a little plastic piece fell out of the inside it's always an adventure taking some things like this apart uh, the knobs pretty well stuck on there I'm gonna give a couple taps to see if I can't get this housing to come off there we go it was just caught up and interestingly enough we have quite a complicated system in here it looks like we had a gear set and one of the gears came loose so I should probably figure out real fast where that went all right we can finish this video up finally I kind of figured out what was going on here and it's kind of interesting so the whole input system and that weird little plastic cap here and the metal rod connects to this guy and so this black wheel here swings around this is what's connected to the actual meter gauge make sure the parts don't fall out and so when you reset the, the meter you would set it to zero and then start it going and this is actually a valve that rubber part sits against this inner ring right here and so once you've started it it will meter but it will meter out exactly 1600 gallons sorry for that pause I need to think about that for a second so it what it does is it'll meter out 1600 gallons and then automatically stop again it's kind of an interesting setup and then because of the scaling and how much water is going through when it lets the water in there's just a little angled channel that spins this little turbine and as this turbine spins it spins this warm gear which is connected to this spur and warm gear which is connected to yet another spur and warm gear which is connected to a third one which then connects to the actual gear that there's a little clutch mechanism so you can reset it and that gear is what drives the front dial so all this reduction is kind of interesting because of how they've got it all set up in here if I can get this the seed in there properly is how they have all these this turbine connected to all these worm and spur gears to kind of go around in a square pattern all nylon gears so the water and everything actually runs through the whole mechanism so this would definitely be a fresh water only unit uh, all these gears and everything would easily get jammed up with all sorts of grit so you wouldn't use this for measuring you know sump water or anything like that uh, just definitely a fresh water only kind of device but I thought it'd be neat to see inside and look at all the gears let me take a second to see if I can't pull off the uh, front knob it's actually stuck on there pretty tight well that was one of the most well secured knobs I've ever seen even though it was e-clipped it's just pressed on so tightly they didn't need to clip anything anyway I managed to get these two spider locks how these work as you can see they have little metal fingers and they're all sharp on the inside they actually had two of them stacked up both of those were just around the metal shafts the little metal fingers just bite into the shaft kind of like how a star nut holds on a headset wow all these parts are really pressed on that took a bit of prying sorry for the additional pause but we're finally done with this here's the internal rod so we get to see all the little parts associated with this unit there's a little washer we got a spring for the pre-tension excuse me and we can probably get this last piece apart here the good yank wow that is tight let's see if I can't let me pause this again nope it's kind of stuck on the end of the shaft but this here's the nylon turbine and then here's the remainder of the gears these two are kind of interestingly held on a little carriage but they're just more of the same as this first one so you actually had 
all these levels of reduction. Uh, let's count them. One between these first two gears, two be between the second two gears, or a second and third gear, three between the third and fourth gear, and then fourth reduction, excuse me, one, two, three, yeah, it's a quadruple reduction, quite a bit, just for to drive this little gear inside here, and so this is going to be pretty tight because it's still uh, eclipsed. So they did a bunch of O-rings to prevent this from leaking. Obviously, lower pressure, I just pulled that out, and there's only one O-ring there, and then there's another one pressed on the inside, or pushed into the inside to seal around the shaft. So anyway, this was just to show one of these water meters. I actually didn't realize that it was a particular unit that shut the water back off after 1,600 gallons, or in 1,600 gallon increments. But that's kind of the point of these teardown videos, is just kind of see what's inside some of these things. And surprisingly enough, they may be more complicated. What seemed like just a wa simple water meter, I didn't know, uh, was actually a 1,600-gallon increment water meter and, lim and limiter. And it had just all these different gears and parts and seals inside. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.